Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I'm excited for this video because I'm going to be doing a review and two looks of the Cleona Cosmetics Archeo palette, which is absolutely stunning. I love the colors in here. I love the packaging. Here's what it looks like. It is just really, really beautiful. It's super sparkly and it's handmade, just very, very high quality feeling. And I think it also is very unique as far as packaging goes and the color scheme is beautiful. There's definitely a mix of warm tones and cool tones, and the matte shades are all on the top row, and the metallic shades are all on the bottom row. There is a sheet for the names, which I actually don't mind, because if you can see with the back here, it is extremely easy to pop these shadows out. If you want to move them around, if you want to put them in like a to-go Z palette or something, it's super, super easy to do that with these. So this palette does retail for 65 Canadian dollars, which comes out to about 48 US dollars, or you can purchase it in a bundle with the Paleo palette, and I believe it's 128 Canadian dollars for both of them. And then also you have to go ahead and add on shipping, which can be a little bit more on the higher side. Not horrible. I think it must have been like maybe 12 US dollars, which isn't very, it's not bad for international shipping, but it is something to keep in mind that it's going to be added to the price and the codes that are available for Cleona Cosmetics do not apply to these palettes. So the reason I am doing this review today is because this is actually going to be back in stock today. These palettes are really hard to grab because they have very limited restocks and they, I think they're like every few months and I think I bought this in November and they're restocking it in March? No, April. Sorry, it's April. They're restocking it in April. So it's definitely been a while since the last restock and these are all handmade and they do have a longer processing time. So these are both actually going to be available today when you're watching this and I'm going to try and have this video up before the restock is live because I'm sure they're going to go fast and I just want to be able to get my thoughts out there while well, it's still relevant. I did actually do a review on the Paleo palette in my Shop My Stash for March, so I've already talked about this, and I do like this palette. It does only have two matte shades, but personally, I prefer the shimmer formula more the more I've played with it, so I do like this, um, and if you want to hear more of my thoughts, that's in that video that I just mentioned. So today, I'm going to be focusing just on the Archeo palette. Oh, I forgot to mention really quickly that today is the last restock of the Paleo, but the Archeo will be back in late 2019, I believe. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they will end up selling these shadows as singles at some point. Um, so, alright, into my thoughts on the Archeo palette now that we got kind of all of the basic information out of the way. Now we can move on to more of my opinion. So I have only been playing with this palette for a few days. I actually got a comment asking me which one I would recommend, getting the Paleo or the Archeo. And I was like, ooh, I haven't even played with the Archeo yet and the restock's about to happen. They just announced it. So I was like, I need to do that. So I did film two different looks, which are in this video. And then I also ended up doing a few looks off camera because I was having some trouble with the shadows. So... Um, and also I have used other Cleona shadows, so I'm kind of familiar with the formula already. I, like I said, I've used the Paleo palette. I've used a lot of their singles, so I feel pretty confident on my opinion, but I have done, I think, six looks with this palette, just to give you guys reference. So this is what it looks like, and I noticed from the very first time that I swatched these that the mattes feel kind of funny. When you swatch them, they feel creamy in the pan, and they pick up so pigmented, but whenever you go to actually apply them to your skin, they feel very dry. It's kind of hard to describe. I've never used an eyeshadow formula like this before, but when, like, whenever I went to apply them, it just felt, they didn't, the creaminess you feel in the pan, you don't feel when you apply them to your skin. So I was kind of like, hmm, wondering about that. And then once I started to apply them to my eyes, I noticed that they are very, very skippy. Um, if you apply them to a primer that has not been set, when you apply it, you will see lines all throughout your eye, um, and it does take a bit to blend in, and that is if you are able to blend it in, because I feel like they kind of, they're so pigmented that they kind of get patchy when you try to blend them. I did have more problems with some shades than others, but I kept finding that problem over and over again, that whenever I would apply... I just found I had to be very, very, very careful with the matte shades 
because if you blend too much, they just dust away and they don't want to stick to your eyelid, which stinks. Um, so over the process of trying this palette, the first look that you're going to see, I used my regular primer. I did my regular routine. I've been using the Essence I Love Color Eyeshadow Base. I'm so close to finishing this. Um, so I just applied that on my lid and I did not set it. That normally works for pretty much all shadows that I use. But in this case, I found it that with that look, I used like the cool tones and I found the mattes really, really patchy and kind of hard to blend. And I had to keep going back and forth. And the finished look ended up being really beautiful. But it's because I feel like with every single look I've done, for the most part, I end up saving the matte patchiness with the beautiful shimmers. I love the shimmer shades so, so much. They are beautiful. We'll talk about them in a minute. I just want to keep walking through the different looks that I did. So next... I tried using a concealer. I used the Wet n Wild concealer and I used it unset and I did another look using the Cool Tones, an all matte look and I actually did like how that turned out. I thought it looked better. It was still a little bit patchy. I did have to keep going back in with the shades, tapping them on very, very gently and just barely, barely blending but I found that to be like, it was a, an okay primer, an okay base and I did kind of like how that look turned out. And then I went ahead and I did that same concealer, the Wet n Wild concealer, and I set it with some translucent powder. I may have used a little bit too much powder, but I, again, had some patchiness problems with that whenever I set it with the powder. Um, I was just trying to go back and forth and try all different ways to make the shadows work in that look. I will try and put pictures on screen as I'm going through to, to describe. I went ahead and when I set it with a bunch of powder, I used this shade and this shade in the crease and this shade was so difficult to blend out. I mean it looks like super nice but it like whenever I put it in my crease the initial spot that I put it down it didn't want to blend which was so weird and then whenever I added the pink on top I felt like it was just kind of patchy and it just looked patchy through the crease and I wasn't really loving the look. I actually did take a picture mid look so that you guys could see the patchiness. It's kind of hard to see on camera but I did do my best and then again I went ahead and I saved the look. And I put this beautiful purple all over the lid and it ended up just fine. Um, and it was like, it was like a wearable look. I could do it. It was fine. Um, I also went ahead and in that look, I used this yellow matte shade on the lower lash line. I used it on the lower lash line today also. And I just have to say, even though I found this to be a little bit difficult to blend in the crease, this is probably one of the most pigmented yellows I've ever used on my lower lash line. Like it looked like a highlighter yellow. It just looked so intense. If you do happen to have this palette, I definitely recommend trying this on the lower lash line with a dense pencil brush because it is, it's extremely pigmented. It's kind of crazy. I actually didn't have any problem with any of the shades on the lower lash line. They all blended fine and they didn't look patchy or anything. Um, so I will, I will give credit to Nomad because it looks beautiful on the lower lash line, which is why I went ahead and did it again today, just because I really like how it looked. And, you know, I thought that look in the end, it looked fine. It worked out, but again, the shimmer kind of covered up the patchy part. Um, and then the next look that I did off camera, the last look I did off camera was really focusing on the warm tones because at that point I was like, okay, I need to try Nomad and I need to see if I can blend this out. I need to see what what is up. I didn't really like using the powder. I thought the powder made the performance worse. So in the last look that I'm showing you on screen here, I went ahead and used the P. Louise base. I actually went ahead and used the white base because my shade was not with me here. It's upstairs and I was lazy, so I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead, use the white shade, and, you know, I've never had any problem blending between the different shades. Um, so I went ahead and added Nomad in my crease because I was like, this yellow is so bright. And when you first add it, it is so, so bright, so beautiful, but it's hard to blend out. Um, it kind of does the same thing. It wanted to stay in the one spot. It didn't want to really move the same as when I add the powder and when I didn't have the powder with the different bases. And I feel like, I feel like I could work with it. Like I could get it blended enough if I was going to do an all the yellow look and just put this through the crease and this on the eyelid, it probably would have been fine. Um, but then once I went ahead and added this orange, the look was, it was the struggle because this orange is very, very, very temperamental. It's definitely one of the shades hardest to use in my opinion because every time I use it, when you try to blend it out, especially using it with the P. Louise um, base, I tried to add it and it was just like, 
gone. Like it just fluffed right off. It did not want to stick. I'm really not a fan of that orange shade all that much, although it does work on the lower lash line. As you can see, I have it on the lower lash line here. Um, and then I went ahead and I used the different warm tone shimmers and I covered up the patchiness and I made the look look fine. So it was able to look good in the end. So as far as the look that I did today, I went ahead and did kind of a little comparison. I used the Tarte Shape Tape and I put powder on this side and no powder on this side. I thought the Tarte Shape Tape would be a really good one to try just because it does, it's, it's a concealer and it has a little bit more of a tacky base to it, but it does kind of set down on its own. Like I wear the Tarte Shape Tape all the time without setting it underneath my eyes and it does not crease throughout the day for me. So I thought, you know, maybe the Tarte Shape Tape will be like the magic saving grace with this palette. I was very hopeful. So that's what I use for this look. And I will say it's definitely the best performance that I have gotten out of this palette. I ended up liking the side that was not set with powder a little bit more because it was easier to have, the pigment was more apparent. It was actually a little bit easier to blend. I think both sides are fine, but I did like the side without powder. But like I said, the Tarte Shape Tape kind of sets itself. So I kind of got the best of both worlds using that as my primer, which I have not used that concealer as primer in a hot, hot minute. Reminds me how much I like it. So in today's look, I kind of, you know, I went in with this neutral shade here, which kind of looks pinky. Maybe it's because it's against this yellow background, but this is actually pretty much a really just like a neutral shade. Um, and then I went in with this pink through the crease, which I thought was really pretty, but it did have a little bit of patchiness. And then I went in with the orange and this was actually the best, the best performance I've had of the orange so far. It was still a little bit hard to work with. I had to be very careful packing it on the outer V, but I was able to get it to work. And again, <laughs> I went in with this orange on the outer V and just slightly covered the little area that was patchy. And then I went through with the different warm tones and I think it looks fine. Like I, I definitely do like this look probably the best as far as performance goes. So that being said, you can see from my experience, I find the mattes to be kind of tricky, which is really disappointing because the mattes are half of the palette. And it is, you know, it is a high-end price tag and I feel bad because I wanted to love this palette so much. I love the brand, I love the packaging, I love the color scheme, but the mattes were just a little bit hard for me to work with, which is why I really do hope that they end up releasing at least the shimmers as singles because I really like the shimmers. The shimmers are so stunning. Um, I would definitely say my favorites are these two right here. This really icy blue shade is beautiful and this icy yellow I just love. I don't really... I don't think I have a really light yellow like this. It's a true just pale yellow, no really reflex or anything. It is stunning. Um, I also thought the green was really pretty. This has more of like a, some type of like neon aspect to it. It doesn't really look neon in the pan. It looks like a pale green, but it is super beautiful on the eye. So I love the shimmers. If you do already own this palette, I would love to hear your thoughts on how you make it work, if you were able to make it work, what you prime your eyes with, because I'm definitely open to keep trying this and keep being able to try and get it to work for me. But overall, I feel like mm, I just don't know if it's worth the price because I did have so many problems with the matte shades, although I love the shimmers. So it's like I love, 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 love half of the palette. So it is kind of bittersweet with this palette because I do love half and then the other half is kind of sketchy. I actually didn't have any problem with the mattes in the Paleo palette, but maybe that's because I used them in conjunction with other mattes um, because I was using that palette with the Lorac um, Pro Original palette or something like that for my Shot My Stash. So I was using other mattes to kind of make it work. So maybe um, if I play with this palette more and I use it as kind of like a palette partner and use it with other palettes, I can see if I can get the mattes to work for me better because sometimes with these kind of mattes when they're like super, super, super pigmented, when you use them with norm more normal shadows, it can end up working out. So I think that's everything I wanted to say for this palette. If I can remember correctly, I think that was all my thoughts on the shadows. Um, yeah, I mean, I tried my best to get it to work for me and I feel like Tarte Shape Tape was the best option, which is kind of stinks because if you don't own Tarte Shape Tape, like... It is like a, it's a high-end concealer, so I do find this to be definitely a high-maintenance palette. That would that would be what I would call it, but the shimmers, the shimmers are so, so, so beautiful. So, like I said a million times, I have mixed emotions on it, and I wanted to love it. So, 
you know, the restock is today and I wanted to get my thoughts up in case you were trying to go back and forth on it. So, you know, if you are someone who wants your eyeshadows to be like super easy, quick, blend out, no problem, no fuss, this might not be the best palette for you. But if you truly, genuinely love the color scheme and you're willing to give it a try with a lot of different primers, a lot of different concealers and find what works best for you, maybe it would still be a good purchase. But like I said before, I am just holding out hope that these will end up being singles. Um, and I did kind of have mixed feelings about the mattes in the um, Cleona 66.5 Degree North collection. I feel like some of them I was able to make work and others like they were a little bit sheer. So I think there's definitely still some room for improvement on their matte formula, but the shimmer formula is really, really beautiful. I really like the shimmers. So I think that is everything as far as my review portion for the palettes. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So now let's go ahead and jump on into the two looks. Running, running. All right, so I'm going to start off with the first look with this gray right here called Leechen. It's L-I-C-H-E-N. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that right. And I'm just going to go ahead and place that in my crease. And I'm just going to go ahead and build that up a little bit. It has been so long since I used a gray. I'm actually gonna take that same shade on a more precise brush and I'm gonna put that in directly in the crease. And then again, just blending with circular motions. I'm gonna go back in with my fluffy brush and just blend over the entire thing again. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this bright blue shade here called Dead Sea. And I'm gonna put this into the outer V. Just gonna build that up a little bit. I don't know, I feel like these shadows are being a little bit patchy. I'm going to go back in with the fluffy brush and just try and blend that out a little bit. I am experiencing some patchiness. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take this beautiful metallic blue called Neo. I'm actually picking it up on that same fluffy brush, which I actually just wiped off. I feel like this fluffy brush, for some reason, applies shimmers, like, really beautifully. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on, like, the inner half of my lid. And I'm going to be a little bit more, like, messy about it. Not as precise. <laughs> Patting that over the edge right here so it all blends together. All right, so obviously that color is extremely beautiful. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off my brush again. I love my color switch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend the edges a little bit right here. I feel like doing your um, eyeshadow like this, it's pretty bold, but it also kind of helps fake like bigger lid without having to do a cut crease. All right, I'm going back in with some more of Dead Sea the bright blue matte shade and I'm just gonna blend that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this beautiful purple shade called Gilf and I'm gonna run that along like the outer two thirds of my lower lash line. I'm gonna take some more of Neo and I'm gonna pop that on the inner third of the lower lash line, blending it into the purple. I'm gonna go ahead and take this green shimmer shade called Terrain I'm going to pop that on my inner corner. The shade is so beautiful. It has like a neon aspect to it. So I'm just going to like lightly blend it into the light blue. Just very, very tiny motions. Don't want to bring it too far up. I'm going to go ahead and add the Ardencian Lilac Liner to my waterline and also add some mascara. I'm going to go ahead and highlight with Wet n Wild Sweetest Bling. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and use a cool tone pink li lipstick, which is pretty different for me, but this is ColourPop Stone Fox. just looks like this, and I'm just going to apply it. Hello. 
All right, so this is the finished first look with the Cleona Archeo palette, and I definitely tried to play up the cool tones in this look, so I like how it turned out. I feel like it's definitely a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I'm kind of here for it, and I really like the green-blue-purple combination, um, which, you know, makes me want to pull out my Hesina 2 again, but I really love the finished look, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and let's jump, jump, jump on into look number two. Okay, so for the second look, I am actually doing a little bit of an experiment, so I'm sure I explained all this in the review, but today I'm going to go ahead and use the Tarte Shape Tape, um, and on this eye, it is unset, and on this eye, it was lightly, lightly set with some translucent powder. I'm going to go ahead and start off with this light nude shade called Fragment, and I'm going to put that in my crease, and just buff it out. actually blending a lot better. It's actually blending pretty well on this side as well, and it does look more pigmented. I'm going back in with a little bit more on this side just to try and keep the eyes even. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this really pretty pink right here called Monolith, and I'm going to put that a little bit lower down in my crease. Told my boss that I'm done Had no luck with my mom Say what will you do with your life You know it's hard to survive A cigar in my mouth I feel like the shade looks a little bit patchy in my crease on this side It does look a tiny bit patchy on this side but not as obvious It's sticking a little bit better I'm just going to go in with the previous brush and just blend that out now I'm going to go ahead and take this orange shade right here called Erosion, and I'm going to put that on my outer V. So I'm just tapping that shade in, blending it out. This is definitely a more temperamental shade. I feel like you have to be more careful and pack on but not blend as much. Dangerous, but it's so fun. Running, running low. Actually, it's blending a lot better on the, this side. On the unset tart shape tape. Still a little patchy, but looks better. Just going back in with my first brush. Blending out the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and take these. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Artifact. And I'm gonna put that on like my outer. Part of the lid. So it's going to cover up some of the patchiness. And now I'm going to take the shade Sundial and I'm going to use that for the inner half of the lid. For my lower lash line, I'm going to go ahead and take this yellow matte called Nomad. on that yellow is unreal. I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of the orange matte erosion. I'm gonna put that on like just the little part right here. Last but not least I'm gonna go ahead and take this beautiful light yellow called sulfur and I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. I'm gonna go ahead and add Ardency and Lemon Liner. I'm gonna add some mascara. I feel like the two sides ended up looking very similar but overall, it was easier to get pigment and to blend on the side that was not set. But definitely the Tarte Shape Tape has been the best experience so far with all of the different primers and concealers I've tried to use with this palette. For a highlighter and a blush topper today, I'm going to go ahead and use the Pixi Subtle Sunrise Duo. I'm just starting off with the darker shade and lightly throwing that on my cheekbones. And then I'm taking the lighter gold and putting that on top of my cheekbone. And then last but not least for lips, I'm going to go into the Kalon Cosmetics Lip Creme in the shade Pinot.
All right, so this is the second and final look using the Archeo palette, and I do actually really like how this one turned out. I love all the warm tones, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. All right, so that is everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.